All right, so it's late, but I'm gonna try to get this video done. Uh, there's something I wanted to talk about, and I don't know how much time I'm gonna have tomorrow because you just don't know what kind of hockey information is gonna be coming out. We have the live stream on this channel tomorrow as well, Thursday, July 9th. So, uh, Halloween Kills, the trailer was released today. You know, I, I, I look at the Halloween movie that they released in 2018, and I thought that ending was perfect, and I thought that should have been Michael's death, and I'm concerned. That being said, the trailer I thought was interesting and the idea of them seeing the fire trucks going to put out the fire and Jamie Lee Curtis, Laurie Strode, and, and the others freaking out about it, agreed. And the fact that this movie apparently takes place the moment that we saw the ending of the first movie, uh, I think that's a great way to pick it up. And it's all likely that since because the second and third movie were shot at the same time, odds are the third movie will take place the same night. So everything should be connected. And if the trilogy is going to be movies taking place over a period of one night, that could be for some, that could, that could make for a really intense movie that you can watch all three of them as one viewing. But related, here's your asterisk, uh, the movie's been pushed back a year. So for obvious reasons, uh, post-production and, and reshoots and anything else might be necessary, they've, they've pushed back uh the the debut of that movie a year and because people aren't in theaters right now and you want to make sure it's a horror movie you've got to have people in the theaters you have to and so that pushes back uh halloween ends by year as well uh now the new batwoman remember i talked about batwoman back out of the show well they've got a new batwoman uh they've casted javicia lewis or javicia lewis uh, or Leslie, Javisha Leslie. Sorry, I butchered the whole thing, front and back. There there you go, that's how you do that. Uh, she takes over, she'll be playing Ryan Wilder, so a completely different character to be Batwoman. And yes, for anybody who's concerned that we went from a character um, who was gay and whether or not it be a gay character, uh, Javisha, she, she identifies as being bi. So we're good on that level, and I know there's people who won't like that, but that's something that was was important when they were doing the casting it was important when they had ruby rose playing the character and now we're moving on to a new actress and who knows this may very well work out quite well uh she's an actress from the show god friended me which i didn't watch but apparently she was good in it so we'll we'll see how that goes um now if you watch sabrina on netflix apparently that's been cancelled uh, now, part four comes out later this year. This is kind of a Netflix thing. You get a certain number of shows and then you're done. And it just, it, it, it's basically the, the production costs go up. Your contract might go up. So they just go ahead and drop it. Now we're going to just drop that show. We don't really need to keep that going any further. And like I said, part four comes out this year. So far, Netflix hasn't really lost a following in terms of how they do this. How continually they just drop shows. But... Uh, you know, we'll we'll see. Uh, Sabrina, I didn't get into it. I haven't watched it yet, but it is one of those shows that's been on my wait list and watch list, and I'm trying to get through shows. Uh, if you're into game shows at all, Awake. Uh, I watched the first two episodes of Awake, and honestly, it's kind of a fun series. So they're kept up for 24 hours counting quarters, and then they give a total of how much they think they counted over an entire 24-hour period, and then that plays into how much money they can win at the end. There's a million dollars you can technically win, but the odds of winning that million dollars are damn near impossible. When when they described how you win the million dollars, it was like, nobody's going to win that. So uh, through two episodes, I'm not going to spoil anything, but I still don't believe anybody's going to win the million dollars. Um, I've also started watching I Am Not Okay With This. That's been on my watch list for quite a while. So I watched the first four episodes. I got Yvonne to watch the first episode. She enjoyed the first episode, so I will watch the rest with her. The nice thing with I'm Not Okay With This, the, the episodes are of varying lengths. I love that with streaming shows that they don't have to be the exact same length. Network shows, it can be frustrating. Some episodes, it feels like they're really drawn out. Others feel like they're rushed. With, with streaming shows, you don't have to do either. It can just be however long the episode needs to be. So one episode of I'm Not Okay With This could be 19 minutes. The next one could be 27, and it works. So I like that a lot, and it's a fun series. There's some language that's definitely not for the for the children. However, it is, it is a very good show, and I would say that for anybody uh, teenage years or older, good show to watch, and uh, I'm really enjoying it, and I'm looking forward to seeing where it's going to go. Uh, I also want to throw in here, there's a bunch of show, bunch of uh, headlines right now on a couple of the, the entertainment sites I follow. 
about the the controversy of of naked people in movies this is entirely an american north american thing i really think that negative stigma needs to go away uh you, you look at movies from france italy anywhere in europe uh and basically anywhere globally other than north america it's not a big deal it needs to stop being such a big deal I'm, and I'm, I'm just throwing that out there because movies get vi more and more and more violent and they're able to get away with more and more violence in R-rated movies than they could have in the 80s and 90s. And yet, there's there's more of a negative connotation now to, to somebody being topless in a movie. And I think that's just, that's going backwards to me. That's not, um, I, I don't even understand the morality of that. I, I, I don't. So, uh, that's one of those, those weird things. Now, getting to catching up on shows here's how far behind i am on catching up on tv in part because of hockey and watching all the hockey games i am finally catching up on new girl i stopped after season three so i have four seasons of new girl to watch i'm kind of feeling happy about that to be honest that hey i got four seasons of new girl to watch cool because zoe de chanel is delightful she's fantastic uh she's one of those actresses i can watch her in anything and i even listen to her to her music even though the music she sings isn't my kind of music, um, <clears throat> I I do enjoy her her music. So because uh, I, I think she has a really nice singing voice, I think it's absolutely fantastic. And they don't really get into that in the show that I've watched so far. And of course, one thing with New Girl as well as Hannah Simone, who's Canadian, uh, loved her when she was on Much Music, and and I love her her character Cece on the show. Um, one of the reasons that I, I, I turned it off was just, it felt like they, they put Nick and Jess together and then broke them up for no reason. And then they had coach in there and I wasn't sure coach served any purpose at all, but you know, cause I, I kind of felt like coach and Winston were almost the same character, but watching it now and, and getting back into a season four, I'm like, ah, who cares? Shannon, you take this way too seriously. So yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it so far. And we'll see how far that goes. But I, I wanted to do a News of the Day type video here on the Entertainment Guy channel. Also because I, I got myself this today. Uh, this is my, my second Billie Eilish shirt. Apparently Yvonne's ordered me another as well. And uh, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm hopeful that during the downtime that maybe her and her brother might be writing something. Because again, you know, she's one of my favorite singers. Which is weird because I am totally a metalhead. Uh, I listen to metal music a lot. And then Billie. I, yeah, uh, so, and if, if you haven't listened to her music, honestly, there, there's a lot of soul in her voice, she's actually a very good singer, and, uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's impressive, uh, when somebody comes along in this era of, of auto-tune being so predominant now with pop music, like Millie Vanilli, they, they shouldn't have been seen as pariahs, they were pioneers, really, in all honesty, they were pioneers in the music industry. Um, I would give them back their Grammy, to be honest, because seriously, um, th th there are plenty of bands out there. They're not doing the Millie Vanilli thing in that, sure, it's kind of their voice, but it's not. Uh, Britney Spears would be the most obvious example. Katy Perry, uh, a lot of songs you listen to, you're like, that's really auto-tuned. So technically, it's not a Millie Vanilli, but really, it kind of sort of is, because if you, you turn off the auto-tune, you make them sing it themselves, it doesn't quite sound the same. So to me, I don't see the difference between that and Millie Vanilli, which was, here's these guys who can dance, and we're going to get somebody else to sing. Because to me, if you're going to have to mess around with all the knobs and switches to make them sound like they're not crap, they're, they're probably crap. And it's a Millie Vanilli all over again. All right, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below regarding that. Anything else that's on the board? Are you excited about Halloween Kills? Are you excited about the idea of there being a Halloween trilogy? Or do you think, you know what, the first movie was good. Why are they making another one? And by first movie, I mean the the brand new one that came out a couple years ago, which wasn't quite a reboot, but it kind of sort of was. And yet it was kind of a re sequel. And I'll get into that in a different video on how much Halloween makes me angry. But uh, it's, it's probably the franchise that makes me the angriest of all of the horror movie franchises. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for all your support. Now I got a treadmill. I will talk to you again soon.